Good morning, my name is Chantel Aiken. I'm a fifth grade teacher at North Wayne, and we are here studying owl pellets and the dissection with Mr. Rick Crossley. Thank you. So today's lesson is on this beautiful preserved creature called a great horned owl. And we've been studying ecosystems. So this is a, a member or an animal that lives in an ecosystem here in Indiana, a deciduous forest. And so we're going to try to find out what this animal eats by looking at the undigested parts, you know, the parts of its prey that don't get digested. And so in just a moment, we'll be starting our investigation. I will tell you that what you're gonna look at, the owl pellet comes out of this part of the owl, not the part back here. Oh. <laughs> so when an owl eats something, there are parts that will not be digested. The fur or the hair, the bones, any claws, even teeth. It eats its prey, it digests it, all the muscles, the juices, and all the soft parts get turned into energy. And then in one part of its stomach, it will regurgitate or spit up the owl pellet. So that's very interesting for us because now we can take apart an owl pellet to see what it's eaten. So if you take a look at this guy, all the energy in the ecosystem starts with uh, the, sun. The, sun. The, sun. the sun. The sun sends energy down to green plants, which we call producers. producers. Now, along comes a small animal, and that animal eats the plants. That animal's called a <laughs> primary <laughs> consumer. Along comes another animal like this owl, and eats that animal. It becomes a <laughs> secondary <laughs> consumer. Now, actually, this guy's at the top of the food chain, so it's called a tertiary consumer. Now, this guy, if you look, has some fantastic body parts that makes him a very good predator. What we're trying to find out is what is his, not the predator, we're trying to find out what he eats, which is called prey. 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 But look, he's got a sharp beak. He's got sharp, sharp talons for grabbing. He's got excellent eyesight. He's got wings for flying. These are all adaptations, body parts, or behaviors that help this animal survive. So Al has a lot of adaptations. Do you know one of these adaptations? Yes. Uh, um, if you look closely at an owl's feathers, they will have like little ripples in the feathers that they can fly softly at night so no predators can hear them. So they have special adaptations, feathers that make them like stealth. They can fly through the night. Now I've gone out at night. Here's what I do when I want to find an owl at night. You might find this interesting. I make this sound. It goes like this. and I listen in the forest. This is late at night, because owls are nocturnal. They come out at night. And pretty soon, far off in the distance, I might hear, let me, let me call it again, I might hear someone, some owl repeat, who, who, who cooks for you? Okay, we'll try it, ready? And I'm listening. I think I hear an owl. I'm gonna try to make him louder, be closer, ready? Oh my goodness, I'm throwing way too many owls. But at night, I've done that. I've gone outside and tried to call the owls, and they will come closer and closer until finally, when I call them, I hear this really loud. Yeah, and I'll shine a light up there, and there'll be an owl. And the owls are not like the happy because each owl has its own territory that it hunts. See, there's competition in ecosystems. And so that owl likes to keep that territory. When he hears another owl, he comes to investigate. But what he really likes to hear is a sound that sounds like this. That's the sound of a rodent that's in trouble. And when that owl hears that, he'll use those silent feathers to fly, those eyes to look, and those sharp, 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 sharp talons to grab. But you don't have to worry. We're not in the food chain of owls, so yeah, okay. So, let's take a look at an owl pellet. Okay, so on your worksheet, you have what's called a bowl stick sheet. So, your job, once we find all the bones of a bowl, now a bowl, another name for a bowl is meadow mouse. So this is kind of like a mouse, but its scientific name is bowl. And you're gonna find all the different bones, because these parts are not digested. So when you find the skull, 
you should find the two bottom jaws. You'll find all the vertebrae. And what's nice about this for me is that these same bones you have in your body, except for the tail. I don't, I don't think anybody has a tail. But all the rest of the bones, like your femur, your fibia, the tibia, your, your vertebrae, your skull, your humerus, your ulna, your radius, we have the same name bones in our skeleton. So this is a vole. That's what we're going to be looking for. Go ahead and point out where the vertebrae are. Where's the vertebrae, the backbone? Point to the vertebrae, the backbone. Okay, where is the uh, skull? And look at the bottom jaw of that. You'll see the jaws. Those will probably be loose. Let's see if you can find the pelvis or the hip bone. Okay. And the biggest bone you should find is the femur. Can you find the femur? It's right below the hip. There you go. So you'll be able to see and find all of these bones, we hope. So here's the owl pellet, right? Now, they don't come wrapped in aluminum foil. <laughs> in nature, I've been, I spent a lot of time out in the woods. I only have found two or three of my whole life because when an owl regurgitates this, it lands on the ground. Rain or water will cause it to dissolve. Bugs will start eating it. Other small rodents will eat all the bones because those are like vitamins, calcium vitamins for them. So the wind will blow the fur away. So these will decompose back in the soil. So you might be thinking, how did we get these? Well, in some parts of the United States, like in Washington State, People collect these from the owls that live in their barns, and they spit these out, maybe two of them a day. They collect them, and they take them to a company. The company preserves them, cleans them, and wraps them in foil. So here's what we have here. You open it up. They're different sizes because it depends on what the owl ate. So the first thing you want to do is carefully unwrap it. And it's got, and look on the outside of it. I see a rib bone sticking out right there and this the gray is fur so then you gently pull it apart we have a couple tools be careful with these these are very sharp we can open this apart like this we have a hand lens to examine and we have tweezers to pull the fur out and i'm seeing if you see something yellow like right here i don't think you can see that yellow that is probably a tooth. And so I'm going to be very careful to take this apart. And yes, Whoa. there's the skull. And if I find a skull, you got to be very If I find a skull, that means there's the entire animal should be in there. And so I'm going to use these. Oh, look at this jaws coming loose. Check it out. There's a jaw. And I'm going to take the fur off of it. And you can see the incisor teeth up front. And then there's the front tooth. In fact, if you take a look at this, you can actually see it. And what's neat about this, this front, this is one jaw that goes on the side, so that's the, we're missing the other side of the jaw, which is right here. And these two go together like this. Yeah, and so those are the jaws, skulls. All right, so you have an entire skeleton. Oh, look here. What part is this? Uh, we can look on our chart. Does that look just like that right there? Yeah. Yeah. There's the pelvis bone. Does this look like that part right there? Yeah. Bottom jaw. I'll tell you what, why don't we go to our seats and start our exploration? Go ahead. Oh, I got some skulls. I got some skulls. What's this? What's this? 
What is that? That is the bottom. Looks like the bottom jaw. Oh, that's the top skull, but you got to get the rest of the fur out of it. Let me start on this one. Get the rest of the fur out of it. That's the skull. You're doing a nice job with all your bones there. Any of these? Can you identify any of those yet? Uh, this is the skull and we that one of these. Oh, right. Nice we job. We found two of the skulls. Nice job on that. Nice, the skull at the top. Nice, perfect. Cool. Okay, so you guys found something kind of interesting, didn't you? That's, that looks. Um, that doesn't look like a bowl. Turn it over. Let me see. Or it could be that one. It's long, and it looks like it's one of these guys right here. It may be a mole. I don't know if it's a rat. Look at the teeth on that thing. Very Who's cool. Who's the tweezers? I think you have a mole. We found this um, bird school. And it has like, a, it has white stuff on his head. And it has like a hole right there. So that's a bird skull. So th these must be the bird bones that you found with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is, what did you have? What do you have right there? Uh, oh, you have a rodent jawbone, huh? Yep. So you're in your owl pellet, you found what, both a mouse and what else? Bird. A mouse and a bird. That's pretty cool. Check it out. Okay, so you see the students here are pretty excited. We found voles, we found moles. In fact, uh, uh, we might have found a bird. And these are all part of the owl's prey. What they're going to do is after they identify and try to pull all these back together, they're going to use this information to create a food chain, starting with the sun, producers, primary consumers, which are the bull, or the bull, and finally, the tertiary consumer. Hey, good luck with your project. We'll see you next time.